Victory Monday! Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you spending your Victory Monday here with us on All in the City. So before we get into it, of course, this is the last Victory Monday of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 2020 regular season. And what a Victory Monday it was, defeating the Atlanta Falcons at home. It's the second time in three weeks we've beaten the Atlanta Falcons. Although both games were not without their drama. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have gathered a lot of momentum. They have scoffed it up and pulled it out of the sky for themselves. Since the bye week, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are not only undefeated, but have scored a ton of points. A ton of points. Tom Brady has been outstanding since the bye week. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense has been pretty good. It's definitely been improved since the bye week, but the offense gaining rhythm, gaining chemistry, really changing what they do. We're not going to jump into strategy and scheme too much. However, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have switched up a lot of their strategy and scheme on offense since the bye week. They are coming out like gangbusters every week, and it's really cool to see. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have done everything you could have wanted coming out of the bye week, obviously going undefeated, but just the way that they've done it and the momentum that they've gained and just, man, it has been a crazy ride. So this is, of course, the last Victory Monday of the regular season. I'm going to miss this regular season so much. This has been easily, easily one of my favorite regular seasons ever, really, that I think I could ever remember. So this has been really awesome. But now it's time for the playoffs. Traveling to D.C. to take on the Washington football team. So we don't really do previews on this channel. However, it is the playoffs. So we're going to do a small a small preview for the playoff game against the Washington football team at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. First, however, we're going to go through the list. So first off on the list, it's going to be the third straight week. The man, the myth, the legend, the GOAT. Goat man, goat man, goat man, goat man. Of course, there's not much to say about the GOAT that hasn't already been said. So I really just would like to take a moment as the season is over now and just appreciate the fact that we get to watch him play and watch him play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers every Sunday. He's the best quarterback that I have ever seen play, honestly, in my life. And to be able to, to be able to root for him every Sunday for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers has honestly just, it's been amazing. And it's something that I am very thankful for and... I still kind of can't believe that it even happened. Number two on the list, Mike Evans. Mike Evans obviously had a short day and one that was ultimately ended in fear and sadness. But it's a pretty big part of history that he just locked his name into. He's been in multiple systems with different players around him, and he has always found a way to be productive. So congratulations to Mike Evans. I have been waiting on this record for a long time, like a crazy, crazy long time, like so long that it really wouldn't even make sense unless I explained it to you and gave you the whole backstory. Number three on the list, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receiver, Chris Godwin. Chris Godwin stepped up big time after Mike Evans got hurt. I think we, as Bucks fans, right, we all know how good Chris Godwin is. And if there's any question of Mike Evans not being able to play in the playoffs, I have the utmost faith and confidence that Chris Godwin could come in and step up. He is so much more than the stats. Of course, coming off of a huge game, it's hard to not acknowledge the stats. However, the most Chris Godwin esque plays of that game wasn't a touchdown or even a catch or a run but rather there was a screen pass to Antonio Brown and the Falcons were in man coverage basically you kind of had a setup where the Buccaneers had two receivers split to the top of the screen Chris Godwin AB Tom Brady takes the snap and he whips out a screen to AB now, when he does that, Chris Godwin's job is obviously to get a block, right? He's just a lead blocker on that play for Antonio Brown. The play embodies Chris Godwin because he doesn't just block one guy and try to clear out a lane so that A.B. can manage to 
you know, eke through there or get the one-on-one -on -one matchup in space against the other defender. Chris Godwin, without penalty, manages to block not one, but both of the defenders in front of Antonio Brown. He actually finesses one out of the way and then just ekes his way into the path of the other. So he manages to part the Red Sea of Falcons for Antonio Brown to coast right through the middle. And that is a play, it's a small play. It wasn't a huge gain by any means, nothing like that. But that's a play when you see it and it's hard to not appreciate how perfect Chris Godwin's execution is. That's a situation where you couldn't ask for Chris Godwin to do more. The man actually blocked two separate people on one play back to back, almost simultaneously. This is a wide receiver. This is a wide receiver. Chris Godwin is a guy who just does all the dirty work for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he excels at it while somehow going completely unnoticed, and he gets minimal credit. Definitely a member of the team that Jason Light has to resign. Uh, Chris Godwin, I've talked about him many times on this channel. You guys know he's one of my favorite players on the team, but it's, it's more than that. Chris Godwin is truly just a perfect employee in a lot of ways, if that makes sense. So that's going to take us to the final spot on the list. We're going number four, guys. Only four this week. And number four is going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line. Now, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line is much maligned and has been for a while. That's okay, though. We're living in the present, not in the past. Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line They've been outstanding. I think we all have seen as the season has progressed, there's only one way to beat Tom Brady. There's only one way to beat the, this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team. If you keep Tom Brady clean, Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line holds up. Tom Brady has time to throw. There's no pressure. Tom Brady will sit there and just throw darts all game long. He doesn't miss. He's not inaccurate. He'll just be perfect. He'll be Tom Brady. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The only way that you could consistently, I guess, deal with Tom if you were a defense is pressure. That's the really the only thing that can get in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers way or get in Tom Brady's way is pressure, Lenny. But there has been examples this year of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line struggling and Tom Brady as a result not having the banner days that we have become accustomed to as of late because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line has been dominant. Now, lately the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line has truly been rock solid. Tom Brady sacked one time last game. He's been getting good protection. And you see the difference, you see the results. Now, this is going to transition us magnificently right into the playoff preview because I'll be honest, I know a lot of Tampa Bay Buccaneers fans are very excited that the Bucs won that game and they are playing the NFC East. It was locked in uh, because of our victory that we were definitely going to play whoever the NFC East spit out into the playoffs. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers not only made it known that they wanted that matchup, uh, but Bucks fans have been excited that they're getting that matchup. So I don't want to get too into who... The Buccaneers should, shouldn't want to play. I don't never really like to get into rooting against other teams for seeding and things like that. I just kind of like to have it all play out and we take on whoever we take on when the time comes. But I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, to be honest with you, when I went through it in my head, I think we got the worst matchup. I know a lot of people are excited about this. Um, I'm not. I think the, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would have been much better going against the Giants, the Cowboys. I honestly would have preferred as almost, I mean, it sounds like blasphemy, but I almost would have preferred to travel to Seattle to take on the Seahawks. I really, I, I don't like the matchup of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers playing the Redskins, excuse me, the Washington football team. I don't think that that is in the best interest of the Buccaneers. To be honest with you, I think it's a bad matchup. Obviously, NFL games are not played on paper. However, I think on paper, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers' worst matchup is the Washington football team. And it's going to be very simple, guys. This is a game that, of course, the Bucs can win. We're the better all-around football team. However, what the Buccaneers struggle with, the, 
uh, the Washington football team is good at. And that's no good. The Achilles heel of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is pressure on Tom Brady. In particular, pressure up the middle, but just in general, pressure on Tom Brady. The Washington football team provides pressure on Tom Brady. That worries me, guys. And it's not exactly the matchup that you want. It's not as, an ide it's not as ideal a matchup as the records would indicate. It gives me this weird feeling uh, in my gut. And it's not one that I'm super pumped about, but we'll see how it goes. Obviously, you could say that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers should win regardless because that they're the better team. And if they can't beat the Washington football team, then really what's the point? And that's fair. That's a valid argument. The problem is today's NFL ultimately comes down to matchups. It's one-on-one, -on -one, my guy versus your guy. And the Washington football team poses the most difficult one-on-one -on -one matchups for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, especially in that offensive line. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense is going to have to be on point. Terry McLaurin is no joke. He's a solid number one receiver. And the, the run defense of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, of course, number one in the league for the second straight year, which is an awesome feat. Congratulations to the Bucs defense. However, they've got to really be on it against the Redskins. They've got to be on it against the run against the Washington football team, sorry. They've got to be on it against the run. They've got to be on it in the pass game, too. When they go zone, they're going to have to be precise and disciplined in their zone coverage because Alex Smith may not be great, but he's not going to miss open guys underneath the zone. Like, he'll hit that throw all day long for four or five yards and kind of just keep the Washington football team on schedule, not taking negative plays. Going to have to get pressure on him force him to be just uncomfortable in the pocket. That's going to be crucial. I think they really are going to have to be outstanding in the fundamentals of tackling in this game. Again, when Alex Smith is hitting those underneath throws, you have to, as a defense, be able to come up and converge on that underneath throw and just bring everybody and make a real team tackle. And that, that's going to have to be a large portion of the game for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The biggest issue, though, again, for me with the matchup is really is really the offensive line. I get, you know, scary visions of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line defending against that Washington front. However, nothing would make me happier than to come on here next Monday and talk about how the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line shocked me and surprised the world and defeated this outstanding Redskins front. Again, I apologize, Washington football team. The amount of times in this clip, deleted or undeleted, that I have said Redskins, it's absurd. That is my biggest concern, though, of course, going into the game. It's just really the pass rush. Chase Young against Donovan Smith. I mean, that is a matchup ah, just like no other. That is going to be something to watch. I <laughs> There are no words. To talk about the stress level and anxiety level that and anxiety level that that gives me just thinking about that that is frightening um but of course it's not just chase young i think people make that uh mistake a lot they do have plenty of first round picks ryan kerrigan deron Payne, montez sweat all stacked across that defensive front so it's not a great situation for the tampa bay buccaneers offensive line they're going to have to be a plus in pass protection and don't be surprised, Bucks fans, if this is an ugly game. I know, like, you want to think that the Bucks are going to go in there and just route the Redskins. Sorry, and just route the Washington football team out and just make them look like they don't belong. But I don't think that that's going to happen. I think it's just going to be a very ugly game. I think it could be a tough, stressful game uh, for Bucks fans. But, guys, we're in the playoffs. Every game's going to be tough and stressful. You can't expect an easy matchup, and I mean, guys, we're in the playoffs, so can't be too mad at it. Tampa Bay Buccaneers are in the playoffs. That's going to wrap up this video. I am very excited for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers playoff game. However, I am very nervous, guys. I hope that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers play just to their potential. That's really what I want to see. I'd love to see the Tampa Bay Buccaneers just come out and play to their max potential, that would just, for 60 minutes, that would just make me happy. All right, but that is going to do it.
for this video and I thank you guys as I always do for staying and just spending the time here of course click subscribe leave a like leave a comment do whatever you really want to do it's all good Tampa Bay Buccaneers get the win I'm gonna need you to say it with me now okay everybody get ready look around make sure you got some space make sure there's nobody too close to you and I need you to say it with me okay it's the last regular season victory Monday, so I need you to say it with me. This is another Tampa Bay Buccaneers Victory Monday! Let's go Bucks. Goat man, goat man, goat man, goat man, goat man, goat man, goat man.